Hey everybody, it's Paul Carruthers. I'm the communications manager for Moto America, the home of the AMA Superbike series. And this is our podcast on track. And I'm joined today by my co-host in Ohio, Sean Weiss. Sean, um, good afternoon, good evening for you, I guess. How's, uh, how's life for you today? Things are going well. I'm actually real excited about uh, how everybody seems to be receiving this thing with, um, well, all of our TV package options, but this Moto America Live Plus thing seems to be going well. Although um, we've had a few comments about it. And one thing I wanted to talk to you about it, Paul, real quick, just um, a lot of people have said, okay, I'm signed up or I paid my money. It's not doing anything. And I thought it was fairly obvious that if we haven't started racing yet there, there really isn't anything to see until the racing starts but i guess maybe they thought they were going to have content that they could look at before the season so um i i just i wanted to talk to you about that a little bit just um because i i don't know what the expectation is but um certainly we are going to be uh launching moto america live plus when we get to road atlanta is that is that correct yeah, I think there, the the hope is that we can get something up there. Um, well, obviously, we'll have it before racing starts, but I think we'd like to get something up there sooner that's going to have some old content just so they can see that um, that their app and, and all that stuff works. I kind of understand their point. I mean, you buy something and then all of a sudden there's nothing there. I saw one guy commented that uh, he thought we were being the Fry Festival. But... <laughs> I had to look it up. I didn't know what it was. But yeah. Yeah, I actually watched the uh, I watched the documentary they did on it. Oh, and and unfortunately, we're not the Fry Festival. They'd, we'd have to put you in a bikini to become <laughs> to, the, to the Fry Festival. But um, yeah, I can see I can sort of see their point. I think they're just trying to they want to buy something, they want to see something right away. But it's coming, and and uh, you know, I I, I promise that uh, everything's going to be in order before actually any any racing action takes place in Atlanta, which is. Gosh, I, I think I leave a week from today and I'm sure you're uh, you're probably that same day or yep. maybe the next day, but things are certainly uh, coming up really quickly and I'm, I'm excited. It's uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a wonderful year. And I don't know why I think um, I mean, I get excited this time every year, but for some reason, I don't I just think that this year's Superbike Championship is going to be something special. Um, and 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 our guest actually today will you know is one of the guys that that I think will will help make that that special because uh, Cameron Peterson is joining us. He's uh, he's from South Africa. I think it I think at the moment he might be living in San Diego, but we'll check with him. But uh, Cameron finished twelfth in last year's Superbike Championship um, on a Broster Honda, uh, which was Danny Walker's Honda team, which it, which is no more. And uh, fortunately, Cam got a job with uh, Omega Moto. And he'll still be in the superbike class, and this year he'll be on a Yamaha. Now, um, I think he would tell you that last year wasn't the best year for him. Uh, I think he showed he showed glimpses of of, of brilliance at time. Um, the Honda wasn't necessarily the best superbike in the class, and I think he rode it hard. And I think uh, his best, I think, was a fifth. He might he can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think that was at race one in in New Jersey. It's funny because looking back at his uh, at his results, New Jersey seems to be a good spot for him because that's where he won his uh, his only Moto America race, which was a super sport race back in 2016 at uh, at NJMP. So mm -hmm. I don't know if he likes the place or uh, I, I know he I know he's he takes to water like a like a duck. So <laughs> it might be the fact that we always seem to get wet at New Jersey that uh, and that's maybe why he has his best results there. But uh, Let's bring Cameron in now. And Cameron, it's uh, thanks for joining us. And, and how are you today? I'm doing good, guys. Thanks for having me. I love that accent. Yeah, it's the <laughs> best. And it's and it's different than Matthew Skoltz's, too. It's like a whole different thing. It's from another part of uh, South Africa. Isn't that right, Cam? Yeah, it's funny how that works. We literally only five hours apart, but our accents are completely different. It's, it's funny to hear you and and you guys can clearly understand each other you can, you can now i don't know if matthew i think he can actually speak a little bit of afrikaans are you you're probably are you more fluent in it than he is no i'm i'm definitely not he he lived in i, I think he's lived in south africa his whole life you know i i was born in spain and well then, that's uh, true grew up in zimbabwe <laughs> right. a little bit so i wasn't exposed to the afrikaans scene um a little bit later in life that's funny. I keep forgetting that you were born in Spain. Is was that, I know it was, uh, it was 1994. I guess was that your dad was? What was he doing at 19 in in Spain in 94? 
Was he working um, with Kenny at that camp? Yeah, he he was kind of running uh, Kenny's camp in, in Spain. Um, yeah, it's funny. My sister was born here in America. I was born in Spain. So, um, yeah, just kind of all over the place. I guess my dad was racing and doing his stuff, a lot of stuff for Kenny um, at that time. We should talk about that a little bit, Cam, because, you know, that's something that, you know, we know about, obviously, Paul. Paul and I know a lot about it. Your dad was one of my first heroes um, in motorcycle racing and certainly on a two stroke. But when he raced in Formula USA on Kenny and you, you're saying Kenny Roberts on those 500s, you know, tell us tell us a little bit about that for people that may, you know, may not know your the background with your dad, what he did. And, you know, he's obviously is born in South Africa from South Africa, but what his career, where how it went and where it went to. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, my dad he was he was lucky he had he had three brothers um and the whole family was just super talented um so they pushed each other from a very young age um i don't think my dad actually started racing until he was 16 or 17. um and then yeah i think shortly they moved to south africa um and back in back in those days the the racing level and the talent in South Africa was, was huge. And there was a lot of international flavor going over to South Africa, um, to do races there. So I guess, I guess he got picked up that way and, um, moved to the States, uh, late eighties, early nineties. And, um, yeah, raced the, the 500 for Kenny, um, you know, and then I think it was 93, um, that, he left America, went to Spain to go start the camp that Kenny had uh, set up in Spain. Um, and yeah, he went to go tra- uh, train a lot of the, the Spaniards, uh, sort of a dirt track motocross sort of technique uh, to just make them better road races. And um, yeah, it obviously worked out pretty well for the Spaniards. <laughs> So he's the reason there are all these Spaniards out there in, in, in road racing. That's funny. That's a, when I see your dad, I'm going to kick him in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, please do. Uh, so, so you were born in Spain, and you, but yet you have a pretty heavy South African accent, as does your dad. Um, did you? Is it just from your family influence, or you know, having lived in South Africa for a little while? What's the reason? Uh, I mean. You know, I was only in Spain for maybe the first year, year and a half of my life. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And then shortly moved to, to Zimbabwe. Um, but funny thing is like growing up in, well, the first year in Spain, um, you know, I watch all the home videos and my sister could hardly speak English. She was fluent in Spanish. She had an accent and everything. So that was pretty funny. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Why didn't you know that? Did yeah. she keep that? Can she still speak Spanish? She doesn't know one word of Spanish anymore. <laughs> she lost it all. <laughs> she lost yeah, it. That's she funny. lost it. And, and, you know, one of the other cool things, of course, about your family, Cam, it, you know, your sister, you mentioned, her name is Shay, and it's spelled S-H-A-E, which is, of course, the same spelling as Wayne Rainey's wife, Shay. So, and I, I believe she was named after Shay. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Wayne and my dad and Kenny and Chuck, they all had a, a really close relationship uh, here in America and, and overseas as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, my godfather's Randy Mamola. So, um, yeah, they all had a pretty close relationship in Spain and, and overseas. And Shay's godfather's Chuck, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, wow. See, it's it's one uh, one big happy family here in Moto America. <laughs> Peterson. Yeah. I, I I don't think Sean and I are anybody's godparents over there yet. So maybe maybe when uh, when you have a kid that you, you know you'll 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 hook us up. You guys might be waiting a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have some conversations with Nina on the side and oh, see if she can, you know, make that happen no, a little bit better. Yeah. So Let's not push that, Sean. I, I don't need a, I don't need that worry in my life anytime soon. Well, let's talk about what we've got going on uh, this coming season. Obviously, a new team, a new motorcycle, and you've done a bit of testing. How 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 are things so far? How do you feel about things? Um, I feel good. You know, uh, we've only done the one test at Button Willow. Um, 
the it was the first round of the AFM weekend. Um and yeah, seriously from the first day I got there, things just seemed to gel with the team and um you know, I'm lucky enough that I got Evan Steele who we worked with last year in the in the Broster Honda team. Um so he's my crew chief this year, so we know each other, we've got a close relationship and I think that helped. Um you know, kind of just walking into the pit straight away. Um, everything was good and everybody's super happy with each other. And, and the bike bike feels awesome. Um, Ken Chewy's put a lot of work into that thing and he put Olin's on, got a swing arm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we were ready to go racing. Um, I did some pretty quick lap times, which I was happy about. Um, so it should be a good season. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. You know, that bike, I mean, I interviewed Ken last week and um, yeah, he talked to me about the fact that I wondered, I said, is it, is it sort of a quasi stock 1000 bike or is it, is it closer to a super bike? And of course he feels it's definitely closer to a super bike because you think about the three components, you think about the, the front end with this, the bigger forks, different triple clamps to handle those bigger forks, obviously an aftermarket uh, swing arm seems to be the secret, at least on the R1 and, and then the electronics and you guys have the swing arm you mentioned, the bigger forks, obviously the the triple clamps as well. Um, and but he said you've got an electronic system that's been flashed a little bit, but you know that's no slouch. Those that those work pretty well. I mean, you know, obviously Matthew Skoltz had that last year and, and and won a race and won a race the year before um, with with a similar electronic system. You know, YEC or Yamaha stock that had been flash tuned. Um, not necessarily by, by FTECU, but I'm saying flashed and, and, uh, manipulated yeah. a little bit. So that's what you've got on your bike, right? Is that, is that what that is? <clears throat> yeah, that's correct. Um, like you said, it's no joke. The FTCU stuff, uh, it works and I can feel it working and, and we just kind of came up with a decision that, um, we just going to run that stuff. You know, the Morelli's it's extremely expensive, um, and you really have to have somebody who knows how to work on that stuff to be able to get the bike just to even run and go around a motor, uh, around a track. Um, so yeah, like I said, it was, I was extremely, extremely impressed with the bike at the test. Um, the electronics seemed like they worked well. And every time we made a change, uh, it was a step in the right direction. So I think it's only going to get better throughout the year. Um, but yeah, electronics, I think, is, is probably the main component at the moment when it comes to super bikes. Where are you living now, Cam? <laughs> I mean, uh, you, 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 kind of, uh, you kind of live this little nomadic millennial lifestyle <laughs> where you're, 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 kind of, you're kind of bouncing around all over the place. And yeah. I, I always expect my phone to ring to see if you, you know, if you need a bed or something in Orange <laughs> County. But so far, so far it hasn't happened. But you're always welcome, by the way. Uh, but I, where I, are you? Are you I in Southern California? That. I'm in Southern <laughs> California. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's it hasn't been by choice that I've moved around all over the place. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that that honestly we're just trying to find the best option and whatever's easiest on the family. Um, but luckily I've, I've actually, uh, you know, my girlfriend's family, they live in Corona. Um, so they've been putting up with me for the last couple of months. Um, and then I've got a few South African friends of mine that, that race supercross and, and professional motocross. And looks like we might be moving into a house together in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to having a base and, and just kind of, you know, starting planting some roots and, and hopefully they can grow instead of just moving all over the place. Do you guys have testing plans before the first? Well, no, you wouldn't. It's next week. So oh, you'll yeah. just have the one, the, the one day on the bike before we get to road Atlanta. Pretty much, pretty much. I mean, it, we did, uh, we did, a a track day just before the, the Saturday and the Sunday races. Um, but I pretty much only got, nine laps i think on the first day on the bike and then um you know I, fortunately we had a few electronic issues with the bike but we got them sorted out so yeah, i've probably got about i would say 40 to 60 laps on the bike 
You know, it's cool about what you did, though, and David Anthony did this in the offseason, too. And I know I know some other teams have done it, too. I, I think that Tuned Racing has um, with Bryce Prince. Uh, this idea of, you know, not just a track day and rent, renting a track is, a, is something really only the factories can do. Um, so you guys go and race in club series like AFM, and, you know, you're actually in race conditions testing the bike while, you know, hopefully bringing home a purse or something. Is that, is that, is, there's probably something to be said. A track day is pretty crowded. Um, you're actually having a great, a grid and practice your starts and everything in club racing. So there are some advantages to that, wouldn't you say? There's definitely advantages. Um, like you said, the track day was, was pretty crowded and uh, a little bit scary to say the least. That's probably why I only got about nine or 10 laps on, but there's definitely an advantage to, uh, you know, having lights go out and, and racing to the first turn and, and getting that, that race feel before the first race, kind of get some of those nerves out of the way. And and uh, for me, it was massive because, you know, I uh, those first couple of races, I just found myself holding my breath because um, there really is nothing like like lining up and, and running it into the first turn of a race. Um, so it's definitely beneficial kind of get your eye in and, and get into that, that race feel. Mm. Did you win? Uh, I won my first race. Um, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately about halfway through the first race, I started having some pretty bad brake fade. And then about two laps into the second race, I had to pull in, um, with no brakes and then uh we had an electronic issue in in the third race um but i led i led a lot of laps uh you know i, I set the quickest lap of the weekend by quite a long way and and Good. from what i saw what i saw from afm's post i set a new lap record so that was pretty wow. cool that's very cool yeah it's terrific so you rode a lot of for quite a while on a 600 and you've been on a thousand for a little while now. Um, you, do, how do you feel? I mean, I, I know you probably want to be at the pointy end and on a super bike and all that, but how do you feel about being on a, a thousand? Does it, does it fit you? Do you feel like you can muscle it around real well? Does it feel like it's a handful? You know, what, what's your evaluation of, of you on that bike? Uh, I, I felt like, uh, <clears throat> my riding style is always suited a big bike. Um, you know, even growing up, riding super mode and stuff i was put on a 450 at a pretty young age and um so i felt that a big bike sort of always suited my style a little bit it's definitely a completely different uh way to get around a track than on a 600 um but yeah i i honestly i love the big bike it it suits my style um but yeah i just uh just got to get some more seat time in the thing and and get a good bike underneath me which which i which i've got and uh hopefully i can can show some people that at least at a couple races that i've got potential to to do to do well what is it that makes you you seem to always go well and and i mentioned this a little early you, you seem to always go really well in bad conditions like r heavy rain is that is it, do you feel like you're just willing to take more risks than they are? Is it something you grew up doing? It doesn't seem like that's what, you know, it doesn't seem like you'd have a lot of rain my, when you're growing up in South Africa. Honestly, my first ever wet race was in 2015 at Coda. My first ever race in America was the first time I'd ever ridden in the rain. Wow. Um, but, you know, I think it's just something that a motocross background helps with. Um you know, you look at all the guys that, that come from a dirt track or motocross background, just like Jake Garnier, Matthew Skoltz, they all go super, super good in the wet. And I think it's it's just got to do with throttle control and, and being okay with the bike, just moving around a little bit. You know, it's funny that you had sent us that video that we posted on social media, the one where you were on the dirt bike and you kind of went up that hill. Um and man, that thing was pretty gnarly. It got a lot of a lot of views. Everybody liked it, but you were going pretty darn fast in that video. So <laughs> you don't seem to have any qualms about going fast on a dirt bike. And I mentioned this to some of the riders, the fact that you guys train on these bikes. And I mean, I, I tend to think those things are the devil's playthings. I mean, every week it seems like somebody in Supercross is getting hurt. And, you know, anytime you guys get hurt, it seems like it's during the off season training on a dirt bike. And I mean, I know yeah. it's, a, it's sort of a necessary evil, but 
what you know you don't have any qualms about going fast so <laughs> tell us about that to me i i just think that there is no better training than than being out there on a motocross bike um for sure it's it's dangerous um and supercross and and what those guys do it's another level um you know it's it's pretty scary and like i said i've i've had the opportunity to kind of get up and close and personal with it with a few south african friends of mine that are that are racing supercross and um that's just a completely different level you know what those guys are doing it's it's gnarly um but i feel like if you want to be a better rider a better road race rider you you have to be training on the motocross bike um there's nothing like it talk to me about the fact that i mean you're you're obviously really good friends with jake gagne and then this you guys this year you guys will be reunited and actually racing together in the superbike class um do you see him fairly often have you seen him lately yeah, I'm actually, uh, after we get done with this, I'm going to head to San Diego, go spend some time with him. Um, but yeah, me and Jake have a pretty close relationship and I'm pumped that, that he's back in America. I actually finally get to, to race against him, which I haven't done. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good year. That superbike class is stacked this year. It's going to be, it's going to be some good, yeah, it's going to be some good racing. Yeah, when you look at it, it's it's. I was thinking about it on my drive in this morning. It's like, you, I can picture this first pack of like five, six, seven guys, and then, you know, some of those guys will fall back into this second group. That's just going to be, you know, another five, six, or seven guys. I think it's going to be. I, I think the racing from top to bottom is just going to be outstanding this year. I think it's 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 something to look forward to because I think everybody stepped their game up a little bit. Um, we may not have the most entries, you know, in the world, but um, I definitely think the quality is there. The, it's, the quality is definitely there. Like you said, the grid not, might not be the fullest, but when you actually go through the entry list and, and see the amount of talent that's up there, it's impressive. It really is. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier, Cam, about your your uh, your living arrangements, and I I know you lived in you were in Colorado for a while. You're back down in San Diego, but I do know from having worked with uh, Josh Hayes in the past that there was a time when you I think you actually lived in a condo that was owned by him. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that wouldn't have happened, <laughs> but Josh Josh is he's kind of put me under his wing from the first day I stepped foot in America. So yeah, he's always looking out for me. Yeah. And I was going to, I was actually going to lead into that. He had a relationship with Clinton Seller, who some fans may remember was in our series with project one a back in the day a little bit, but you know, I, I wanted you to talk about, I, I think you're friends with Clinton Seller. And also I wanted yeah. to mention the fact that Kenneth, Kenneth told me, you know, I, your teammate on Omega Moto is, is um, Corey Ventura. So both, I believe that both you guys are going to be kind of coached by Josh this year. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Um, you know, Josh, Josh is just one of those guys that he wants to do nothing but help other riders and, and make sure that they get the best out of their career. Um, you know, he's just, he's just that type of way. And honestly, if you approach him and you ask him questions and, he's willing to help in, in any way. Um, and Josh is just that kind of guy, you know, he's, he'll do whatever it takes to help anybody else in any way. And and he did help Clinton back in the day, didn't he? Are you friends with Clinton Seller at all? I know he's older than you by a bit, but. Yeah, me and Clint were actually, uh, we were pretty close. We raced, we were teammates for a little bit. Um, so yeah, me and, me and Clint, we definitely hung out a fair bit back in South Africa. Um, and yeah, I actually, I hope he comes back to America and tries to do a couple rounds because let me tell you, that guy can still ride a motorcycle. Yeah, he was a good rider when he was in our series. And then he became kind of Matthew's nemesis at the end of the time that Matthew was racing in Super GP over in South Africa. So yeah, he should come over here. He knows all you guys. So that'd yeah, be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool to see him come do a couple rounds here. Now, Cameron, did you go? Did you go to Daytona? Did you drive Hayes's van to Daytona, or is that? I uh, I didn't go to Daytona, but I did. You know, I just tried to help Josh out. They needed to get the bike over to uh, Chuck Chiacchetto's place so that he could build the motors and and get everything worked on. So, um, 
you know, obviously Josh and Melissa, they got a lot going on. So I jumped in their RV, drove it to Atlanta. Um, and then, yeah, they flew me back home. I know you do a little bit of freelance truck driving. So <laughs> if, if, I ever, if, I ever, if I ever get stuck here and I need my truck like driven home or something, you're the yeah. first guy I'm calling. If anybody's looking for a driver, let me know. Yeah, like if, if you need someone to drive to Atlanta next week, Cameron could probably help you out. Cost you a little bit of money, but he'll do it. <laughs> you know, you know, we talked we talked about your motocross background and your love of it and riding dirt bikes. But one of the things we didn't talk about is, I guess I'll call it your day job, but your your job that you do have that's you know related to riding on dirt bikes. T tell us about what you're doing with that. Um, yeah, also kind of the same thing. Danny Walker's, uh, he's been a big part of my life since I moved to America. Um, and I don't know why, but he keeps letting me go back and, and <laughs> help him out, help him out at American super camp. Um, <laughs> which is also just, it's so beneficial for me. Um, it's just one of those things that every time I get on the bike and every time I'm at a school, I learn a little something new and, uh, you know, also, it's just a way of, of getting a little bit of financial income because, uh, unfortunately, you know, the only way I can earn money at the moment with the visa I'm on is through racing, and that's pretty non-existent. So, um, wow. So, yeah, so, you know, without Danny Walker and American Supercamp, I would seriously be struggling, and I don't know if I'd be racing. What what is it that you guys learn at that camp, or what do you teach at that camp, uh, Cam, about road racing? Is it throttle control, uh, balance? What what do you think the primary things are in that camp? It it, it all just helps. Um, you know, we get we get a a lot of road racers that come there that that just want to better their skills, um, and there's a lot of technique that goes into it, um, and just riding a dirt bike and understanding the tools just as you know getting people to use the rear brake um even body position wise just everything that that danny speaks about for sure i mean the dirt track sort of technique is completely different to to road racing um but there's a lot of tools that you can take from his camp and and translate over to the road race bike that's just going to make you a way better rider um you know so you know, honestly every every camp that i go to i've been doing it now for four years and every camp that i go to it seems that i walk away learning something new and and having another skill in my back pocket that i can use hmm. we need to get sean out there cam because i <laughs> as you know I would as you, as you know, I, I've done a, I've done a couple of them, including the last one I did, which was with you. But uh -huh. um, I, I think Sean Vice out there would uh, <laughs> would would, uh, would be interesting. I would love to see Sean on a TTR 125. It's funny because well, one of the things you guys don't know about me, I actually have a TTR 125 that I converted to a, a dual sport bike, so I actually ride it around the neighborhood. <laughs> I don't really, I don't ride off road very much. I've always ridden on the road ever since I started riding. But um, yeah, I've got like lights in this uh, license plate on this little thing, and I just terrorize the neighborhood with it. So, so but I'd, I'd be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be right at home. We pretty much have a a dual sport street tire on the back, so. I think you'll fit right in. Yeah, but I've never been on the dirt, so I'll wipe out with it. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with that camp is is I think it's just uh, going fast on a motorcycle of any kind really comes down to traction management. And 100%. I think that and that's what that teaches you because there's a lack of traction, so the throttle control is is uh is really important. It's just I, I I don't I honestly I can tell you I, I don't think I've ever had more fun on a motorcycle than what I've had at those days at that super camp. So oh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's so much fun. I crashed. I think I crashed <laughs> once or twice, but and I've did I I, I end up doing a lot of push-ups for some reason because I'm not a, I, yeah once or twice and I do a lot of push-ups because I'm not a very good rule follower apparently. Oh, so, okay. When, when you break when you break the rules there, they make you do push-ups. So. Oh man, yeah. that's hardcore. 
It's um, hardcore. Yeah. Don't feel bad. I think the most I did in a day was like 180 push-ups. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel too bad. Nah, I won't. Uh, Cam, what's your uh, – back to your dad for a minute. I know he's been involved in your program in the past. He's actually worked with other riders while you're, you're on a different team. What, what is he doing now or is he going to be in our paddock this year? What, what's going on with Mr. Robbie Peterson in the near future? Um, you know, he's, he's pretty much just helping uh, Danny out with American Super Camp stuff. He's, he's still living in Colorado. Um, he, he really doesn't have – any plans to you know try get back into the paddock I, I don't think um but he just got such a passion for for the motorsport for road racing in general um so i i would really like to try get him back involved somehow um mm-hmm. but yeah i think he's gonna try make it out to a few races this year and uh see see what he can do now that's a guy who he can ride the shit out of one of those little dirt bikes. <laughs> oh, I tell no, you. Seriously. Seriously, yeah. For someone who's missing a shoulder. Yeah. It, it was it was funny because uh we just I literally just got back from a camp in Atlanta. Um and one session we went out there and you know, my dad's telling me he's like, All right, let's go. And I put my head down for two laps and I looked behind me and he was he was right on me. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah. He, can, he can get around pretty good. Well, I would I would tell anybody that happens to, to that's fortunate enough to go to that camp to make sure they do go and spend a little time with your dad because he's he's a very modest man and he's usually keeps his mouth shut and he's off to the side and he's he's always busy doing something whether it's working on a bike or or getting something fixed for Danny. But um, if you if you're at one of those camps, go have a chat with the guy because yeah. he's he's yeah. he's a he's a real legend. Well, yeah, people don't realize that, you know, he's he's worked with and trained some of the best riders in the world, you know, um Seta Gibernard, Carlos Checa, Jean Michel Bale. Um so yeah, my dad really is he's the man for sure. Yeah, he's a good dude. Do you guys ever think at this point in your lives, do you do you think your dad, uh anybody in your family will will ever go back to live in South Africa or are you going to be Americans from now on? Um, we Americans, this is home now. Um, you know, I consider myself an American. Um, it's, it's a pity, but just South, South Africa is a dead end at the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't think there's much of a future in that country. So yeah, we actually trying to get, trying to convince the rest of our family to come over here and it's just a better quality and better standard of life over here. You know, that's what I was leading into, too. I, I figured you probably had family still at home. So with this new package we've got with TV, um, especially this live plus streaming package, have you talked to anybody back home? And do you know if they're going to do they try to see your races? And have you talked to them about the maybe increased ability to see them with that application? Yeah, I mean, the, South Africa, actually, there's a lot of people that that follow our racing uh, back in South Africa. Unfortunately, I haven't haven't spoken to too many people back home in, in a while um i've just been kind of out of touch but i definitely know it's it's going to be huge it's going to be massive for those guys um because there, there's a big following and and they love it yeah i mean we hear from matthew of course you know that he's the same way it's like you know there are people that try to find out um i'm sure you know andre the photographer that comes over here and follows you guys yeah. and stuff so yeah um, it's great how you have actual have people that come over and stay for a few rounds and see the racing. It's, it's pretty cool that you have such good fans in that country. It's great. Yeah. It's, have uh, you, sorry, go ahead, Paul. Have you, I want, I was just going to ask you if you've ever show, shake that guy's hand. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I, I, yeah, his hands are like, I, I feel like, I feel like my hands like, a six week old baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's Andre the Giant. That's who he is. He really is. That, I, I, that's a big I, man. I, he's a big, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not so big, but anyways, my hand was just like disappeared in there somewhere. I wondered if I was ever going to get it back. Yeah, it kind of makes anyway, you feel that's bad. Just a, that's just a side story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, um, but, you know, we, 
one of the things that we've, we're talking about this week, uh, Paul and I, in fact, he's doing a story on it, which will be out uh, by the time this podcast comes out. But we've had a massive increase in entries uh, in, at Road Atlanta. You know, Superbike is kind of, I think it's around the same, but the support classes like Twins Cup are, is, is like out of control. So, well, no, it's not out of control. We'll take every, we'll take every bike we can get, you know, we'll yes. send them yeah, off yeah. in waves like they do at Daytona. But it seems like it's really gaining momentum. Um, it, it's great to see that. I'm sure you're going to be excited to have not only more riders, but more fans in the paddock to come around and see see what you're all about. It's going to be awesome. I mean, that's exactly what our sport needs at the moment. And and I can see that you guys and, and Motor America, they, they're doing absolutely everything they can to uh, try get our sport back to the top and, and back to where it used to be. Um, so. Yeah, I think the more bikes, the more people we can get, the better. Yeah, last year it's it's last year we we left uh, we left Road Atlanta just going, oh my god, what are we going to do? Because we had this twin <laughs> we had this Twins Cup class where there was nine guys, and uh, and I looked at the entry list yesterday, and there was thirty nine entries for the wow. Road Atlanta wow. Twins Cup That's... class. So it's 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 really been it's really good for me because Wayne pays me a dollar for every entry, so that's thirty nine bucks. <laughs> and I want to see if I I want to see if that's for two days or if it's just for one day. But you know, I can, whatever thirty nine times two is, I you know that feed me for a little bit. Awesome, <laughs> that's cool. That's great. Uh, um, Cam, one thing, one other thing I want to ask you about is the type of rider that you are. You know, corner speed guy like to move the back end around you love uh dirt track stuff with danny's school i don't know if, how much flat track you've done i know you've done a lot of moto um what what kind of rider are you do you are you riding with the rear end or, or trying to carry corner speed what, what what's it all about um you know it's there's a fine balance i mean uh that's that's actually a great question because I, I feel like um on on the big bike it's it's a def definitely a different riding style to to anything I've ever in my whole life, um, and it, it's taken me a little bit. But for sure, I, I just find myself being a, a front end rider. Um, you know, I rely on a lot of front end feel, um, and that's kind of pretty much what I every weekend I, I work most on is is the front end, just trying to get that front end feel. Um, but yeah, you know, I think I think corner speed in, in some situations can can really hurt you. Uh you know, the the quickest way around the track is is just obviously the more time you can spend at a hundred percent throttle. Um so whatever you whatever you do just to, to try and make that happen, get to full throttle as soon as you can coming out of out of corners where uh you know corner speed can sometimes hurt you in that sense. So um, you know, I've, I've been working on that a lot and, and I'm lucky enough to have Josh Hayes and, and Danny Walker in my corner and, and we've been working a lot on that. Just, just trying to be able to get the bike slowed down as quick as possible and, and fired out the turn. You know, that makes sense with the fact that you mentioned the problems you, you had some brake issues at, uh, the AFM race. I could see why <laughs> if you're somebody who's hard on the brakes, um, do you use the rear brake at all? Yeah, yeah, I I uh I love the rear brake. It's obviously again it, there's there's a wrong and a right place where you can use the rear brake, but I'm a firm believer in in uh using the rear brake. You look at all the best riders in the world and and there's a reason why they use it. Um so I think uh if you want to be a better rider, you definitely have to use that rear brake. And the last thing related to that for me on that is since you are hard on the front brakes or hard on the brakes how is, do you ever deal with arm pump? Have you ever had the surgery or felt like you might need to? I've never had the surgery. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I do suffer with arm pump a little bit. It's, it's something I've been working on massively this off season. Just, uh, for some reason, I, I don't really get it on my motocross bike. Um, but as soon, as soon as I get on the big bike, um, it seems to hinder me a little bit and you know the arm pump surgery is something i've looked at for many years but you know i want to try fix it in other ways before i i go that route hmm. all right guys i'm going to call an end to this um i know uh i know cam's got to get going to see our good buddy jake gagne so make sure you tell 
make sure you tell him hello. I, is he is he up and about? I mean, is he still on crutches or not? Uh, to be honest, I think he might have just got off crutches. Um, but if there's one thing I know about Jake Garnier, that guy's determination and and discipline uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I know he's gonna be he's gonna be ready to rock when when the time comes. Yeah, I tried to talk him into eating a couple of cheeseburgers because I thought that would help heal him. But you know, he's not. A, I don't think he listened to me. But no, he's he's not about he's not about that. Paul, Paul you watch. It's gonna it's gonna be like what nineteen ninety nine Daytona all over again. He's gonna be like Miguel Duhamel and show up there with, on, with a cane, walk over, hobble over with a cane, get on the bike, and go nuts on the motorcycle or something. So yeah, was Miguel. Uh, yeah. Miguel had a pretty good knack for. Uh, <laughs> for the drama when it came to that stuff. It, it's funny because when you look back at those races every year, like w- whenever Honda needed him to do something, like they come out with a new 600 and they sort of needed him to win Daytona, then he would figure out a way to do that. So he was yep. he's pretty clutch racer there. But yeah. anyways, you guys, um, again, Cameron, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you. Gosh, I, I hate to even say it. Well, I don't hate to say that I'm going to see you, but I can't believe it's already <laughs> next week. <laughs> Come on, I'm not even looking forward to seeing oh, you at man. all. Yeah, I understand that. You, oh, you know, nice, you can't. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but anyway, when you, see, when you see me and I go walk the other way, you know why? <laughs> yeah, I'll know that I'm with Sean. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, I'll be ready to give you a big hug, Cam and Paul. I'll be hugging both you guys. So get ready. It'll be a good thing. Okay, so- so I'll see, I'll, see you, I'll see you guys there. And what I'd really like to do is see everybody there that's actually listening to our podcast because. Yes. Uh, the more the merrier and uh, road Atlanta is a fantastic place to watch a motorcycle race. We have good pricing on our tickets. There's still early bird stuff available right up until the last minute. Once you get to the track, it's going to cost you a little bit more. So if you can uh, get your tickets early, you'll save a bit of money. For those of you who can't attend, make sure you watch. uh, How about all of our TV packages and our live streaming on Moto America plus uh, live plus. So, and also listen to the podcast. Keep listening to it. Um, the popularity seems to be growing, and I I don't get any hate mail, which is something that I enjoy. I don't know if Sean does. They but send if he it does, all to me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're the troublemaker in the group. I'm just the nice guy trying to make some conversation. Oh, yeah. That's exactly how it is. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, you guys uh, take care of yourselves, and and uh, like I said, we'll see you next week. Sounds Thanks, good. Kim. Appreciate appreciate you guys having me on and keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Hey, hi, say hi to that wonderful family of yours, and I there hope to go, see Kim. them soon. See oh, you guys. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Bye, guys.